Once again, today we have FOMC Minutes coming out at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It seems like every single week there's some reason to fear what's going to happen with the Fed, what one of their governors is going to say, what the inflation numbers are going to be. It's very clear that macro has largely been driven by the Fed. Of course, now people are starting to price in a 5.3% Fed rate at the top when just three weeks ago it was 4.9%. People are schizophrenic and seemingly cannot make up their minds as to what the Fed is going to do and what's going to happen with inflation. But maybe the real story for us in context of all of that, while we saw a major jump in stocks yesterday, is that Bitcoin is actually up 50% on the year. We're going to talk about why that's the case. I, of course, have Dirk with me from Prime XPT Academy, obviously, because it's Wednesday, and that is what we do. And more importantly, if you looked at the title, he and I are going to look at the long-term analysis for Bitcoin and why it is on a path to 100K. You heard that right, $100,000. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and slap the like button. As I said, yet again, we're seeing a wobbly stock market. Yesterday was one of the worst days in quite a while, and Bitcoin barely dropped. Of course, it's now trading right around 24000 again when we were pushing against 25000 But I think that it comes as a surprise to nobody who's been following literally anybody, that 25000 is going to be a very, very tough nut to crack, right? I mean, we have, I'll show charts later, but we have the weekly 50 MA there, the weekly 200 MA there, and of course, the resistance at 25212 depending on what exchange you're looking at, which represents the most key resistance to me on the entire chart, because that would break bearish market structure, a break above would be the first higher high since all-time highs, and effectively would put an end to the bear case yesterday, Crypto Burb made the point on here. If you were watching, made the case that we were already in a new bull market and in an uptrend based on moving averages and a whole lot of other indicators. But for me, I still want to see us breaking above that 25,000. Guys, as you know, we are sponsored by Prime XBT. Check out the link down in the description. You can get up to a $7,000 deposit bonus. But more important than the sponsorship with Prime XBT, is that we found Dirk who comes on here and blesses us with incredible knowledge every single Wednesday. So I'm just bringing him on right now because it's what you're all waiting for. What's up, Dirk? How are you today? <laughs> hey, what a nice introduction. Thank you. Hello, everybody out there. Great to be back here. And you look good today. You, know, you got you. The, the, I, the coat on. You, yeah, you're looking very I, I put on my smart glasses, you know, because it's a difficult mar market at the moment. So I, I have to be smart about it. <laughs> It, it is a difficult market at the moment. I mean, I sort of laid out a list of all the issues that we're having, obviously, with macro. But the story with Bitcoin for the last almost year has really been that correlation yeah. with macro, right? You see the minute stocks move in one direction, Bitcoin either slightly leads or slightly follows. We see the dumps at the same exact time, but not as much the case anymore factually, right? Yeah, absolutely. We, we've seen a bit of decoupling um, from uh, Bitcoin from uh, the S&P 500. So and I, I think that's a very, very positive sign because usually we see something like this happening in a bull market. And uh, I can only repeat what seems to have been the topic yesterday on your live screen um, that we seem to be in the early phases of a bull market and which is, in my opinion, going to lead us past 100,000. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a second. I just want to tell people, this is not anecdotal, right? We're not making this up. This is an article in Bloomberg yesterday. Bitcoin breaks away from stocks in 50% surge, defying macro peril, right? Yesterday, we obviously saw a massive move down in stocks, but Bitcoin barely moved down at all. And we talk about correlations all the time. There obviously is a way to actually determine that mathematically, one is completely correlated for anyone who doesn't understand. We've talked about this a lot. So that means if something moves, you would expect something to move exactly the same and at the same ratio. Minus one is completely the opposite, inversely correlated. So if one goes up 10, the other one would go down 10. Anything closer to zero is when you lack correlation completely. 
The total high, you, you can see it right here. I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, do this. This divergence has denied a positive correlation between shares and crypto that sprouted in the pandemic. A 40-day correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500 has slid below 0.3 to the lowest since 2021 from a May record above point A. A reading of one implies assets are fluctuating in lockstep and minus one signifies the opposite, as I said. Point three is almost completely uncorrelated. These markets are not trading together in the last 40 days. Right, Dirk? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And um, maybe if you can put on my chart, I think we can very well see this also. Uh, what happened here the last days uh, in, in Bitcoin, I, I try to highlight a little bit. You said it just now, 25K obviously is the big resistance. Uh, we tend to always snuck over that uh, intraday, but we don't dare to close over it at the moment still. And if I if I look here at the S and P 500, obviously, especially the last days, as I'm talking about, where's my brush here? Uh, about this fractal here, uh, we've seen some massive slumps. Really, um, the fears all there, the uncertainty. Maybe we're getting. Uh, 50 basis points of interesting uh, interest rate hike uh, in the next decision. We have FOMC, like you said, in the beginning tonight. So there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, yet, Bitcoin seems to be resilient. Uh, resilient? Uh, what is the yeah, word? Uh, yeah. um, and, and at least for a while. Of course, you know, it cannot completely decouple in a, when, we have, when we are seeing a negative uh, day in stocks. But what makes me actually very positive is, first of all, I want to say that remember when we did the first live stream, we actually said well, we want to see Bitcoin going down to something between 20 and a half and 21 and a half. And I think we pretty much nailed that one. So everybody yeah. who bought down there, well, congratulations. Uh, you should secure your winnings uh, now. Maybe you already took some profits there. And if I look at the two fractals, so the, the ones I've circled here, always when we see those big wicks, long wicks to the upside, that means uh, normally that actually that asset wants to go higher but you know because of the environment uh, the total risk on or risk off environment we are right now in it, it doesn't dare to and i tell you one thing if bitcoin really manages to close above twenty five thousand, we are going to have this fomo really kicking in again we are I very agree. quickly going to rush to 28 maybe into thirty thousand. You know, and then you'll have a situation where your grandma and grandpa are going to ask you again, shall I buy Bitcoin now? I just came back, <laughs> by the way, from, from Singapore the other day, uh, where we were attending an expo. And really the most, the, the question I got asked the most by attendees of the expo there was, hey, do you think uh, Bitcoin is going down to 20 or 18 or 16 and a half? You know, I kind of missed buying there, but I, I don't want to buy now. And it's always like this. I mean, history repeats itself. And that shows me all those people that are asking this question, those are the ones that are going to FOMO into the market once we take out the 25K. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say this is going to happen today or tomorrow. Of course, as always, uh, and I, I couldn't say it more beautiful than you did in the beginning, this is largely going to be influenced by what we hear tonight if we are in the FOMC meeting by the new inflation data, by interest rate, and by, so the markets are still in the grasp of the Fed. Nonetheless, still, I, it, this makes me extremely po uh, positive that finally, finally, we're seeing the early stages of a bull market. It's still going to be a volatile phase up, uh, but remember also what we, I think, said two weeks ago when we had the golden cross in Bitcoin, minimum target for this is 30, 000, uh, 32,000 US dollars. So we might go up there, and then go all the way down to 25 or 20K again. This would be very, very typical for this, you know, months pre or the year pre to the next halving. We've seen this yeah, in the past multiple times. Totally agree. And I think that, uh, you know, you want if 25 breaks, which I think we all assume it will eventually, you want to see it tested as support, just like we wanted yeah. to see that support zone that you drew there tested as support. I mean, my chart is very, very similar as you know, right? This is when we were talking, as you said, there was your buy zone. It wicked right <laughs> down to 21,473. Now, I mean, my only concern here at 25 is how fast, not weather, right? And, and yeah. as you said, though, we have these, I mean, basically three touches of that line at 25,12. And I think we have one, two, three, four of the last seven days have gone above 25. It wants to go. Kind <laughs> of, <laughs> yeah. um, Kind of reminds me back, back then uh, when we... Uh, finally went over 20k again in, in Bitcoin. Uh, 
the early stages of the last bull market, you know, and that was awesome. Once we pass it, there were really no limits in, in going up anymore. For me, interesting also, I mean, we still need to look at the S&P 500 for sure in, in order to understand the market. So 4,000 obviously is here, you know, a psychologically uh, very important thing for me. I, I'm, I'm not so skeptical about the stock market because uh, what is important for me as a trader is this yellow line here. This was uh, the resistance that we broke where I said a couple of weeks ago when I think we did the first live stream. Uh, we are breaking above this. I, it seems like the S&P 500 is forming a new bull market. And what comforts me a little bit is when I just measure how much space we still have there. So potentially today, over the next days, we could still go down another 2%, 2.3%, and it still would be considered a new bull market because it was, would be a higher low. So the definition of, of a bull market. Uh, the volatility, of course, is, is high. You know, I, I know that doesn't help you maybe on a daily level if you're watching this, uh, but it's important, you know, to kind of zoom out and not get lost too much in those five minute, 50 minutes or one hour charts, you know. Yeah, I love that you also use the same colors as me. I can see that's the 50 MA in blue right below, I believe, and yeah, the 200 exactly. MA in red. So nobody would be surprised to see retests of those either. Absolutely. Yeah. More than enough, you know, and uh, if we are seeing a change in market structure, we see the 200 moving day average kind of as a support and resistance zone that fluctuates with the, with the price as well. Yeah, and so it also, interestingly, talking about when retail will FOMO in. I think we start, my opinion is that uh, it'll be like in the mid thirties to low forties when we really start seeing people going crazy. Oh, I think okay. 25 is a very big break for traders and for people who are watching the market closely, but for CNBC and stuff, if we were at 35 or 40, 42, they're going to be talking about a hundred. Yeah, that's actually a, a good that's, point. That's yeah. when we start yeah. to get the million dollar targets again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> again. <laughs> Yeah, you don't see those very often anymore. No, no, now everybody is happy with a target of 100k, which of course would be great already. I mean, well, let's let's, let's talk it. about that. Let's talk about that because I think we both, uh, you know, think that there mm. is a part, uh, a, a very good chance of that happening in the next bull market. Yeah, it is, and of course, guys. So when we talk about figures like this, we're talking long term now. No, that's why I think it was important also to show the short term picture of what might be happening now, the next days or weeks. Long term, it's always good to zoom out a little bit. I just want to really repeat here also what I said on probably every, every live stream there. When in doubt, zoom out. You know, notice that when inflation ticks down, the yellow line here from very high level, that normally always, I mean, there's a 100% chance uh, if you would have traded this in the last 70 years, you would have gotten the low of a stock market. So again, I'm asking myself, why should it be different this time? Yeah, and... I know inflation was ticking a little bit higher. That happens. You can see this here also. It happened before. But that doesn't mean that inflation is going back to 9.1% or 10% or even higher. I think that is very, very unlikely. And I, I put my money where my, my mouth is in the, in the past months. Also, if we translate this to Bitcoin, I can only repeat myself. The 18 months prior to uh, in a halving are an accumulation phase where you have those phases of FOMO, of course, so you can very easy see massive bull runs followed by massive bear markets again. Uh, what is important here is to focus on where could the price be uh, uh, at, the, at the next halving and should history repeat itself? And I don't see any point why it shouldn't repeat itself. Well, there are a couple of points, of course, Black Swan events like a nuclear war or escalating war or, or, or something like this. Um, then we should see Bitcoin around 40 to 58,000 US dollars in late March, early April, April 2024, when the next halving and the next halving is then going to initiate the bull run. And again, if history repeats itself, I think 100,000 US dollars might be actually a conservative goal. I, I agree. If we're in a full new cycle, then only going... 50% above, not even, above the previous all-time high would be very low. I mean, this cycle, people thought we were going to go much higher and have the blow-off top, which yeah. we didn't, which was sort of the difference in this cycle. But you're still talking about, you know, tripling the all-time high or more from the uh, 2000, you know, 17, mm -hmm. late 2017 high, 20K, we went to 70. And the, still the question, 3.5X. 
three and a half X to the 70 K high. And you're talking about, you know, being in the three hundreds ish. Almost yeah. And then, then you'll hear things like, Oh my God, you are so lucky that you bought a 25 K. Uh, so good, you know, but people of course don't see what it takes to really huddle through those bear markets as well. Uh, if you are a believer in Bitcoin and I'm, I'm just saying, I, I mean, I agree with you, you know, during the last bull cycle, I also said well, actually 100 K should be more than possible uh, in this bull market. I think looking back now that, price was stolen uh, was stolen from us by you know market participants like FTX uh, who well, it seems like you know orders buy orders didn't really reach the market instead they issued some kinds of IOU at this price bitcoin so there was demand stolen actually from the market uh, that's my working theory right now if we see bitcoin really only going to 100k in the next cycle then, of course, we would be talking about something like diminishing returns, uh, which but is that, do you think that that's a, that's a that's an interesting topic, though, because a lot of people have sort of made the point that, you know, as Bitcoin becomes more mainstream, obviously, it squashes the volatility, which I, I've seen. I think we've seen to some degree, which yeah. means we don't get the huge swings to the upside or the huge swings to the downside. I would say over over seventy percent correction here was a pretty damn big swing to the downside. But <laughs> yeah. then people will say, "But it wasn't eighty five or ninety like you know uh, cycles of the past." Yeah, I think it's also to the upside. I mean, I don't think we are going to see markets uh, like we saw in after the halving two thousand twelve two thousand sixteen, where Bitcoin goes up like ten thousand percent or almost ten thousand percent or two and a half thousand percent after 2016. I mean, you have to put that into numbers, first of all, what that would mean for the price. We would talk about billion uh, Bitcoin being well above one million US dollars and even higher in, in 2025, potentially. And also at the market cap, then we have a marketing a market cap of something like 100 trillion. So <laughs> this is like real estate market cap almost already. The higher we go, the lower the swings to the upside and downs are going to get because it's a maturing asset class. Uh, probably the next, you know, bull run could be something like companies, big companies out there, more countries, first world countries, I'm meaning there, although I don't like that word, uh, putting Bitcoin maybe on the balance sheet. If that happens, then yeah. Congratulations. And all bets are off. <laughs> all bets are off. Yeah, right. really, yeah. but, but when we start talking about the kind of absurdly high numbers, it, it would take a fundamental shift in the way yeah. Bitcoin is viewed and used. Right. You, that That's when you start talking about mainstream adoption, a billion people owning it, or like you said, every country putting it on their balance sheet, or, or I mean, uh, every company, countries uh, adding it to the central bank. Those are things that are very... Uh, distant possibilities still, yeah. I would say. As we and, know, in countries and, and large institutional bodies, they tend to be late to the game, at least when it comes to new technologies, of course. We've seen the, the same with the internet adoption. Looking at the uh, having cycle, obviously, I mean, we're still a year and two or three months away from the actual having, and we know that the real bull market kicks in months after the having. Mm -hmm. that, that's when it sort of get starts to actually matter that the supply is reduced. So how high or low do you think that we could just go this year? I mean, I do think we're going into at least the 30s here this year, right? Something yeah. like that. But then do you think we just, then it becomes a new range for quite a while, 25 low, mm -hmm. mid 30s high, something like that. That's what I would... If I had gun to my head to guess, that's yeah, something see. something like this. I can very easily see us forming to to like thirty two thousand as a minimum target, maybe even something like forty thousand, you know, just to drop down again by another fifty percent, and 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 then people are going to get depressed again. We're going to see all the news, you know, Bitcoin is over, Bitcoin is dead for the, I don't know, three hundredth time. Uh, uh, according to Bitcoin arbitraries. And uh, it, it's normal, you know. I, I think, on the other hand, it's a beautiful position to be put in right now. If you look at things like this, that you say, hey, I still actually have the next like 15 months time to pick out uh, prices where I think Bitcoin is, re uh, is, is, is reasonably priced. Uh, be that, in your opinion, at 20 or 25 or whatever that is. Uh, because once the formal machine kicks in again with the next bull run, then it's going to be too late. 
humans are amazing. Once you know, we'll we'll, we'll put in a high. Everybody will be excited, and like you said, it'll drop to twenty five, which is where we are now with all of this optimism. And we'll be talking about zero, and it'll be a higher low, and people yeah. will be having heart attacks and saying that uh, they're dumping it all at the bottom. That's probably how it will go. Dirk, any other final thoughts before I let you go? Keep a cool head out there, you know, it's like, I, I know the news out there, uh, especially the so-called mainstream news, uh, they like to pick up the bad news, uh, obviously, because uh, bad news sell good. So they are more reporting on the bad things happening in the world. Uh, when in doubt, zoom out, see the macro picture. And then uh, I think things are pretty clear that also here long term, this probably are still good prices to buy crypto, Bitcoin, or whatever your coin of choice might be. Absolutely like it. And as Christopher said, uh, keep a cool head. This guy's fucking awesome. See, they love you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> Guys, I, I'm going to let Dirk go, but since it is Wednesday and we haven't had a ch chance to do a bunch of charts, I'm just going to take a bunch of chart requests for you guys to get Good. those queued up and we'll go for another 15, 20 minutes. Dirk, thank you so much, guys. Uh, check out everything that Dirk's doing at Prime Academy. Uh, so much educational content, so much. You can sign up down below and uh, it'll drive you there, of course. Um, just really insanely valuable uh, experience and insight. So thank you once again, Dirk. Thank you for having me. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Awesome. I know you guys love him. I see. Thanks, Dirk is great, says uh, says John over here. I got you. Eric says, no love for Ethereum. We can take a look at Ethereum right now. No problem. No problem. I've got Ethereum charts, man. And then I'm going to uh, think of... Uh, Take a look at uh, some other requests for you guys because it's Wednesday. And you guys might remember on Wednesdays, we used to do Charter Palooza every week. I would take, that's when the newsletter was not free. So we had paid subscribers. And I would take requests like by the millions from the subscribers to the newsletter. And I would show up and do like cook through 30, 40 charts a week. I just don't have that in me anymore in this market. But uh, we can definitely take a look at a few. Here's uh, Ethereum on, uh, well, I guess we could zoom out, right? Ethereum uh, going back to, I don't know, 2020 sometime. Or what year? What year? Yeah, 2022, excuse me, 2022 sometime. Obviously, uh, Ethereum hasn't done uh, particularly well since October of 2021, November of 2021, which was the top around almost $5,000. Man, those were the days. Those were the days. What a time to be alive. But we've seen the massive drop. And since the bottom, it was a very, in my opinion, and I shared this at the time, it was a very, very clear bottom. We had this ascending triangle here, right? Higher lows into a flat top, zoomed up, hit that, uh, hit the target of that ascending triangle up here, which is around 1800, actually overshot it to 2000. And now we've sort of just been chopping. But if you look at that, right, this was another higher low right here, right into support. This area was demand, major support around 1,000. So you put in this, you put in a high, put in this. Well, now to make bullish market structure, in my opinion. So I can't say that this is like in a massive bull rally again yet. You got to get above that high, right? Low, high, higher low. That higher low does not officially get confirmed until you make a higher high. So a break above 2030, and this is way, way back into a bull market. But I, I, I've been pointing out these zones for quite a long time for anyone who's following. You might remember on a stream with Burb and Cheds when price was up around 2000, I put a circle on this 1284. They both agreed that was the key level. Never was retested after that breakout, right? Price broke through, headed up, no retest, right? Well, it dropped right into the circle that I had drawn, even like on perfect timing, that was an accident. But the idea was there, that's where I bought and I'm still in from 1284 uh, on spot, yes, I held that even when it went down to ten thousand to thousand seventy one. It's a long term position. That's the dip that I was looking for, right? Uh, and so now we come back into this very key area of supply right here, much like the uh, twenty five thousand level on Bitcoin. You've got a lot of selling interest at these highs, probably even more up here. But you can see, right? You have this line right here, and price was kind of trading had to wick through that line a few times, finally got above, held it perfect as support. Yeah, not so much, right? So now you're looking for a drop to test one of these MAs, maybe even down here into the 1500s. Although I'm not convinced that's going to happen. I'm just saying technically, if you lose that, but the key levels obviously are this red supply, one, two, three, four wicks into that, much like the Bitcoin chart, right? Let's go back to the Bitcoin chart. One, two, three wicks right into that uh, 25 to 12. Two of those wicks, if you zoom in, 
on Bitcoin went slightly above. Those are bearish SFPs, right? Not big ones, but they're bearish SFPs. What does that mean? I've explained it a million times, but I can't take for granted that there's always new people here. Swing failure pattern is what it's called. Very simple way of saying a shit ton of engineered liquidity. And what is engineering liquidity? If you're a whale and you want to sell or you want to get short, right? This happens the other way too. If you're a big player and you want to get short or you want to find liquidity for your sell orders, you can't just sell into the order book when the liquidity is thin. You have to go to the pools of major liquidity. Where would there be major, major liquidity on the Bitcoin chart? And you can use this on any chart just above 2512. Why? Because if you want to short or you want to sell, you need what? You need buy orders, right? So what? how do you get buy orders in this situation? You push price intentionally into an area where people are buying. They There's breakout traders. They see a break of 2512. Even if only it goes to 25297, they say, holy shit, resistance is broken. I'm buying. There's a ton of liquidity and orders there. Also though, this is where you get stop losses, right? You push above anyone who was short had and did not give themselves enough room, you assume. Usually you get this with a bigger wick, by the way, guys. So this isn't the best example. You want to push a little further. But anyone who was short, where did they put their stop loss? 25,250, right? So you push there. And when you trigger stop losses on shorts, what are those? They are buy orders, right? So more liquidity or finding all of these ways to force a bunch of buyers and to fill liquidity for your shorts or for yourself. And that's what's happening in a situation like that. Anytime you see these key levels broken down, you see it right there, broken up, that's what you're looking at. So yes, that's kind of counterintuitive. It means that if a whale wants to sell a lot, sometimes they will buy a bunch to push price into the area where they can sell. But they're also making money on those buy orders, right? So they're pushing price up to that area, by buying, they kick in a little bit of FOMO, they get everyone to buy into resistance because we know that human beings love to buy resistance and sell support. And then they fill their orders selling, they make money on all of those and they're able to sell even more at that price. That's, if you're wondering what the bigger players, the whales, the manipulators, you guys call them market makers, that's not what market makers do. Market makers maintain a spread. That's what, happens and it's happened in markets since the beginning of time swing failure pattern right that's why you will constantly see these wicks through key areas and that's why it's generally smarter as a trader to wait for confirmation once price closes above that level the liquidity is drained and you can be pretty sure that maybe there wasn't even liquidity being engineered but either way there's absolutely no surprise to anyone that the line that effectively says the bear market is over, that also coincides with the 50 and 200 daily MAs, which just death cross, is going to be as hard of a resistance as you can basically imagine, right? This is just, there's no way, okay, there's always a way, but the, it was very unlikely that you were going to just go, wee, right? Not going to happen. Rejected. And now, if we want to make the more bearish case that we're not going to break it anytime soon, this is the weekly chart zooming in. I mean, this is a, and this candle has not closed yet. This candle has not closed yet. So it's not relevant yet, but we got a lot of work to do. It's closing below the 50 and 200 after testing them for the second week in a row. And you have perfect tweezer tops. Tweezer tops through resistance, right? This is as toppy a top signal as you could have. I'm not saying top forever, but this is when you start to talk about, well, if we confirm like that with tweezer tops, you know, maybe you come back down to this area and get that retest before a push up, right? So tweezer tops, not where you want to be, especially on the weekly chart, especially breaking through slightly the most key resistance there is. <clears throat> Anyways. So that's what we got uh, from from there. What do you guys want to see me chart? So ETH, yeah, I mean, ETH is kind of, it's a mirror, right? It looks like it should drop further before a push up and get through uh, that area entirely. Yeah. Check out Naka. I don't know what that is. Naka. 
Nakamoto games. Wow. I think I might have a wild chart. Let me see. Ew. But this is going to be ancient, so we're going to need to draw some new things. This is my favorite thing, is when we pull up charts I haven't looked at since Chartapalooza, you open it, and there's nothing there. Why? Well, the market wasn't that bad. <laughs> I have to scroll way down. So we were talking about prices. Uh, you know, There was some line I drew over here. This is a four-hour chart also, which doesn't help us any. But yeah, we were like trading at like two dollars and eighty cents, you know, or something. And now we're talking about uh, forty-three cents. First of all, this looks like an Adam and Eve double bottom. Okay, this is wilder world. It's the world that's that's wilder. Not to be confused with that horrid trash show on HBO. Was it Westworld, which was good for like one season and then became arguably the worst show on TV? Don't at me, bro. Anyways, this is Adam, V, Dick, uh, Eve, Vagina. They call it, they literally call it an Adam and Eve double bottom because it looks like, you know, maybe you would get a harder V because that's a weird, weird dick. And we're right at the key level that would confirm an Adam and Eve double bottom. And bad. Bad. That, the bearish SFP, there you go. There you go. Right? That's it. This is a better example of what I was talking about. You cannot touch this below 52 cents, and you need a close above. This is the trade that you want, right? You don't want to buy this running into that where it's been rejected one, two, three times with wicks above and below. If you're looking for a dip to buy, this is where you look. 36 cents. Very straightforward. Very straightforward. Bibbo Swanee would like you to know that Adam and Eve together make double bottoms. That's correct. That is correct. Dez, of course, asking for Matic, and we know that I'm looking at Matic. So yesterday I tweeted, we were at like 140 something right here. I was like 140 to 130 to 169. Okay. Listen, we know Matic has broken out. Matic has broken the key resistance at 130. So I was expecting then from up here, a retest of this. It's the same exact thing I just drew for you on the others, right? You're looking for this and you want that obviously, right? So is that close enough? It looks like, I, I literally tweeted this yesterday, 10 cents higher. It looks like it got to about 131.9, pretty damn close. But you know, somewhere in this area, usually you go a little below it, something like that, right? But still, no reason right now for the immediate target not to be this 169 area. You could even call it up to 174, I think, going much higher. Um, but listen, uh, the caveat here is that any altcoin chart is dependent to some degree on what Bitcoin's going to do. How's Link doing? God, I haven't heard that one. Oh, this uh, chart right here is the inflation chart he was looking at. I was going to create my own to take a look at that because that was really compelling what, he was, uh, what Dirk was saying. You got big bearish divergence. A lot of these on charts, by the way, right? Big, big bearish divergence here in the daily. Don't love that. Although it's been now a couple days of it, right? So I actually it only confirmed yesterday. I don't love that at all. Uh, but taking that away, link has just been ranging. Like nothing's changed since whenever I drew this, right? So maybe you get the bear div and then you get this golden cross price right on top of it. So you buy around seven bucks, you know, down in here. You expect like, the most basic level, anytime you kind of have a break from an area like this, you just draw a demand zone off that candle. Oops. Which is not working very well. You could also draw one down here, which might be the bigger demand, to be quite honest. I kind of favored this one. My drawing tools are acting like tools, something like that. So that would be like 680, right? And then uh, head up. But you do have the EQ of this range. So anywhere in this area, I would say. But listen, there's a bearish divergence. You got all these wicks up. These are top candles, topping candles, long wick up, small body. Everything looks like it wants a little more retrace. So I, you know, I can't say that's what's going to happen, but that, that is what it appears uh, we're looking at at the moment. Um, you guys are having a whole conversation over here about wild 
Uh, looking for uh, what else you guys got? Syscoin or Digibyte? It's like 2017. I haven't heard. Sys, I literally don't even have a chart for uh, the USDT pair. Maybe I do on Digibyte. I do. I guarantee we're going to see really low prices here as well. So let's just delete and start again. First, let's just start on the weekly, right? This shit got digi bit. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Well, you always got to draw these kind of lines first. Okay, player. That looks pretty ready to go on the weekly, to be quite honest. It's what you want to see, right? You have this downtrend breaking up high, low, high, low, high, all that low, high, low. So if we're looking at it in the same terms that we were sort of looking at Bitcoin, this would be the break 0.018, which is a pretty big move from here still. That's kind of the break of bearish market structure, right? High, low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. That lower high was confirmed by this lower low. So you got to get above 0.01831. Like, because we're doing like multiple fractions of a second of a, of a penny. But you do have the first inkling here of the breakout. You want to see this volume going up, which clearly it is. Because look, we're only three days in and this volume candle on the weekly is as high as both of these. This is going to close somewhere up here. This is going to be a big volume weekly candle. You had the break. Now you maybe you get a retest. It's going to be hard to know. And it's launching from exactly the right place, right? Look at that. There's your high that was put in here on this wick before the big move. That's the exact one, two, three candles exactly interacted with that line. I mean, that's pretty crazy. Look at that. No matter how far I zoom. And now that's support. So you don't want to hold right now. You want it to stay above 0.011. And you really, I mean, as far as it is, you want to break above 0.018. Because guys, when you... Going back to Bitcoin, when you break above that line that sort of signals uh, the end of bearish market structure, I know it sounds crazy, but then your target starts to become the previous high or even higher, right? You're back at a new bull trend. So here you got low, high, higher low. Now I need to make a higher high. So, yeah, I mean... Things looking kind of rough today, but macro, if we can get a few more big moves, you know, then you're starting talking about, I mean, technically on this breakout in the first place of this line, you're starting talking about target of that 0.184. So very crazy. What else you got? In your opinion, is Solana going to make it this cycle? Yes. Yes. I think whatever damage was done by FTX is done. Yeah. Anyway. Digibyte rebranded to doggy shit. Cool. Coin, good choice because Coin had some uh, brutal earnings last night, right? I didn't even look, but I know. Uh, why do you even need to look? Uh, not so bad. I mean, trading right around yesterday's close, even with the bad earnings. I mean, Coin is just ranging still to me. I mean, I thought it was, I said here, it was a screaming buy at 40. So you're up 50%. When it recaptured this range right here, that was go time. I bought there, but I also bought in the 200. So yeah, not that fancy. Not that great. I'm still, uh, still definitely scuba diving on this one. Yeah. Uh, not much to see here on coin. You know, listen, we all know Bitcoin breaks up. We get some clear regulation. Coinbase becomes one of the most valuable companies in the world. That's it. Pretty easy. Um, what else we got here? AKT. Is that Akash? Akash? I don't even have that. Look, I'll make it though. We'll do a new layout. Go over here. Do AKT. Crypto. AKT US dollar on Kraken. What's Kraken? Is that the newest place you can find it? Because... Let's look at it on, uh, oh yeah, uh, I like that Kraken chart better. 
It's not Akash. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, let's just see something. Akash Kraken. Go to the daily. Got to make it my colors. Let's uh, put some indicators on here. Maybe some um, MAs and RSI. There are going to be no MAs because, you know, we're done with that. All right. Sorry. It takes a minute when you guys come at me with something I don't know about. It looks fine. This wick is weird and makes uh, drawing any pattern pretty tough. Uh, you can see there's going to be like some hidden bullish divergence here, likely. Continuing to make higher lows here with a lower low here. You obviously had bearish divergence right at the top. Guys, you know the top is in when you're hitting 83 RSI with bearish divergence, right? Here's a lower low, lower high on RSI, higher high on price. I think that all this will probably drop more, to be honest. Uh, 44 cents to 40 cents, like this. You know, I, I always draw lines, but we should be drawing regions. We all know that, right? Areas. I mean, something like this, right? Gets these highs, this right here. Maybe we already got the wick down, but I think maybe another one. And then uh, you start heading up to this area of price action up here. Buck, you buck. Dollar to dollar twenty, something like that. Hard to uh, hard to guess. There's not much price history. So I don't really know. To be honest. Uh, STX. Fuck is that? Does this have Adam and Steve? STX USDC. Well, oh, sta oh stacks. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I literally, like STX, and my brain obviously didn't work there. I know Muneeb. I just was uh, hanging out with Muneeb for three days in Dubai. He's been on the podcast a bunch of times. Look at that. Look at that. Volume. We have the biggest volume in history on stacks outside of this one candle at the very top coming in. And effectively a 4X move off the bottom, the top, and still pushing. Yeah, I mean, this looks amazing. Um, is this because of ordinals? I'm going to imagine there's your kind of resistance retest as support. I would say next logical place is in here. And this look at all that price action. It's trading now above. That's your key. See that this is a, like a real genuine monster breakout because this whole area would be your key resistance that you had to break through and it did it in one candle and retested it, right? Draw that over. That's exactly what you want to see. And this area, and then if it breaks through that area, you start talking about the highs here, which like you can pull back to this area, right? Probably can pull it back further, I would imagine. Yeah, I mean, very, very tough area to crack will be like 156, something like that. I mean, if you can still get this retest of 54 cents at some point, I would bid it just in case with the expectation that you might miss it. But yeah, I mean, stacks, pretty awesome, smart contracts on Bit uh, on Bitcoin. I, I really and I just really like their team and and who they are. So, Drew, is this an uh, opulous request? I'll give it to you. I like opulous. I own some. To be fully transparent. Dang, this thing's made moves, huh? I didn't even know because who pays attention to things they own? Well, well, there's the weekly 50 MA being flipped to support. I would say that's the first key uh, signal that we got good things going on here. I would say that right now, it's kind of the same thing we just saw. We're breaking above this area, kind of in it. Golden cross. Uh, you had bearish divergence right at the top before the drop. No surprise, right? That was a move from 30 cents to 70 cents. You could have caught right there simply on this bearish divergence, right? Could have shorted it right there, a little push and down. That's that's how this works every time, every time. But yeah, so listen, we'll, we'll draw some lines. We'll call this here. Uh... Clear resistance in here. Uh, something like this. 
Ah, that didn't work. We'll just do it with a line. It's too small. This area, 39 cents, something like that. But as small as that looks, that's a big move from here. Right? A, a massive move from the current price, something like that. And then obviously you're, you're going to be looking at this area if that happens, right? See, look. Look how well these line up, right? All these lows break below retest as resistance. You can tell the key areas. You start on the right when you're drawing, right? I started by looking here in April 22 and then pulled back to see what else we would find. And of course, we find that was this resistance before the move down. And that was the support on the way up and the launch pad. Easy. I would say it's looking good as long as it holds this area. If it breaks down below this, you start looking down at like nine cents for a buy, and that would be an awesome buy, something like that. Clear. Pretty clear. <clears throat> um, but I really like Opulus. I think it's great because um, I like music and I like Algorand, you know? What else we got? Just switched on. Has FTM been done? No, it has not. We can do that. Opulus is awesome. Do you guys own it? Any of you own Opal? Drew, do you actually own it or are you just kind of aware of it because you're a fan of Algorand ecosystem? Oh, you can stake it on their website for 5 to 15% yield. Cool. If you're not going to sell it, might as well do that. FTM got, has been so bullish for so long here. Um, but I'm concerned with that. There's a, I'm, yeah. All of these are resetting though, right? They all got massively overbought, had huge bearish divergence, right? I mean, you guys see that, right? Some high, lower high, that was here to here. When it put in the bearish divergence, confirmed that was the dead top. This is a day later. You could have shorted this or sold it at 64 cents and bought it back at 40, which is right at this. Right. Uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of lines up here. That might not be a bad line. Let's see. I mean, right now you just want to hold 41 cents. The buy, a lot of these, the buy opportunity was already though. Right. You should have bought it. You should have been bidding that 41 cents on the drop. So now you kind of don't want to touch it until it gets back above 65, this high. Right. And look at where this high is. And then you're targeting 95. Just play it level to level. You want to get confirmation, flip, move. I would even say that this is a better level now. Something like that. Something like that. Um, he does own Opal. Being transparent, he does. Guys, I got to run. That's all I got for you today. I love doing this. So we'll do this on, we'll keep doing this on Wednesdays when we can for sure. Hope that some of that was of value. The idea isn't like for me to tell you what to trade. I'm not trading most of this stuff. I could not give a shit. The idea is to have a second set of eyes on a chart. Maybe it'll line up with something you're looking at or it'll teach you how to look at it, right? Where should you draw a line? What's the idea and theory behind why these lines matter? The lines only on a chart Guys, they only matter because it's where some human is going to make a decision. And the more humans that might make a decision in that area, you want to be on the other side of that. That's what lines are. Resistance is resistance because it's where a lot of people are going to panic and sell because they don't think price can go up anymore or they're underwater and just like to get out even, right? So you got to start to think about why these things matter, not just draw a line and make an assumption. Because it also matters what kind of uh, trending market you're in. There's other, there's other things that matter besides simply drawing a line. So, it, guys, I will be back tomorrow. Ooh, wait, tomorrow we've got a big one. Let me uh, open my little calendar here. Tomorrow we got a big one. Yeah, <coughs> I've got Jeff Booth tomorrow, the one of your favorites and the author of Price of Tomorrow referenced by basically every guest all the time. He's going to be here with Matt Hogan and Oliver Lynch. The roundtable tomorrow is going to be epic sauce. You do not want to miss that. So until tomorrow, guys, I will see you. Peace. <laughs>